What's up YouTube, how goes it? So if you know anything about video editing or if you're looking into it, you've probably stumbled upon two very prominent choices. I'm talking another than Adobe's Premiere Pro and Apple's Final Cut Pro 10. Both these are fantastic softwares and super popular in the creative community. In fact, they're so good, you're having to watch a video to see which one is right for you. Well, fret not. I've got you covered because I'm going to go over some critical factors you may want to consider before choosing either software. And by the end of this video, hopefully you can make an informed decision. As always guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Factor number one, availability. While both these softwares are super popular, one of them is far more widely available than the other. I'm of course talking about Adobe's Premiere Pro, which is actually available on both Windows and Mac OS. That basically means regardless of which machine you're using, you're going to be able to get access to Premiere Pro and not just Premiere Pro, all of Adobe's Creative Suite softwares because they're available, like I said, on both platforms. Now in the case of Apple's Final Cut Pro 10, it is exclusively available on Mac OS, which means you need one of Apple's machines in order to run it. Now you might find this to be a bit of a nuisance and yes, it is to a great extent, I'd argue. However, there are certain reasons for this exclusivity or should I say certain benefits, which we'll get into later on this video. But again, if you're not considering getting a Mac machine, then Final Cut Pro is kind of off the table for you already. The next thing you want to consider is the user interface. Now make no mistake, both Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 10 are technically pro-grade softwares, which basically means they're not intended for beginners per se. However, don't get intimidated. A quick crash course on YouTube or any other online platform will get you exactly what you need to make a nice video project in no time. Of course, starting off with Adobe's Premiere Pro, it kind of takes a more traditional or orthodox approach to video editing. So you kind of have these sub tabs at the very top by the name of assembly, editing, graphics, audio, etc., etc. And of course, each tab has a corresponding function. So under the assembly tab, for example, is where you would kind of put together your timeline clips. Under the editing is where you would trim and you know sequence them however you want to. With all that being said, Adobe Premiere Pro might seem a little more traditional, like I said, in the sense that it lets you do one function at a time. Of course, you can still perform all your basic functions no matter which of these tabs you're in, but it kind of organizes you in a more linear fashion when it comes to editing. In contrast to this, Final Cut Pro 10 takes a more sophisticated approach. So basically, you actually have everything you need in one one single interface. Of course, you have your timeline, your inspector, and your library viewer all there. But you'll notice that all the core functions are kind of spread out throughout the actual interface. For example, if you look right above the timeline on the right side, you'll find you have the elements and the effects folder. So basically this pane is kind of put there purposely because Apple's gonna assume that when you're kind of putting your timeline together and matching sequences, you may want to imply the transitions then and there. And let's say when you're doing more advanced things like adding motion templates after you've done your editing, you may then choose to add the effects. So that's why you actually will find that you have the effects pane directly above the actual library, which is kind of its own separate sub tab per se. Again, Apple kind of interprets how you might do your video editing and they try to make it all in one big interface at the same time. Both these attempts have their benefits and disadvantages. I'd say that Premiere Pro is a more organized attempt at video editing, whereas to Apple's Final Cut Pro is literally a more agile attempt and kind of says, just do things as they flow with you. This is a preference-based thing. I can say one is better than the other for every user because every person is gonna have their own opinion. But I do think just from an entry perspective, learning perspective, Adobe's slightly more organized approach makes it ever so slightly easier to learn and adapt to. The next big factor to consider, of course, is performance. Whether you realize it or not, performance can have a direct impact on the overall quality of your video production. That's because you spend more time worrying about if your computer can handle it than actually just putting the stuff you need to. And when it comes to Adobe Premiere Pro, like I said, it's widely available across a lot of machines. One of the downsides of this, unfortunately, is that it can't be optimized for every single configuration out there, which means it runs better on some configurations than others. Particularly when it comes to high-end machines with dedicated GPUs, Adobe Premiere Pro runs super smooth as you'd expect it to. 
to. But when it comes to more low to mid range machines that may not have a dedicated GPU, we'll find that the performance can be somewhat laxer, luster time to time, especially when you have like machines that are rocking i3 or i5 processors without additional GPU support. So if you're doing editing above 1080p, like 4K or even 8K editing, you'll find that often there's several frame drops or if you add too many layers of video and graphics on top of that, it becomes a very rusty and laggy experience that can actually affect your video quality again. So with that being said, Adobe Premiere Pro kind of has a bit of a unfortunate event going on there where they have so much availability that it's hard to be perfectly smooth across all systems. Now in contrast to this, Final Cut Pro 10, because it only has so many machines to deal with at a time, can be way more well optimized. Also given the fact that it only runs on macOS means it's built for macOS ground up. So overall you'll find that on Final Cut Pro 10, often having the equivalent specifications that you would on a Adobe machine, you actually get better timeline performance. Especially when you're doing 4K or even 8K editing, you'll find that there's little to no frame drops and it does a much better job at handling multiple layers of video or graphics and you don't spend a lot of time worrying about your computer slowing down or heating up too much. This is a great thing. So if you are someone who is doing 4K editing but you don't wanna spend let's say $1,500 on a new computer with a very powerful GPU, a Mac mini with a M1 chip of just eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM can give you very similar performance that you would get on a high-end machine running Adobe Premiere Pro. So keep that in mind that one, software is slightly more optimized. Well, actually, in some cases, considerably more optimized than the other. So in this regards, I have to give it to Apple. Final Cut Pro 10 definitely has an advantage there. The next big factor I wanna talk about is pricing. So Adobe and Apple have two fairly distinct approaches when it comes to the pricing model. In the case of Adobe's Premiere Pro, you basically pay a monthly or annual subscription fee. The monthly subscription fee is $22 USD per month, of course, to get the video package, which includes Premiere Pro and a couple of other tools as well. This is a ongoing fee that will keep going as long as you want to use the software. There's no end date, there's no cap on it. Now this is beneficial in the sense that it's a small monthly fee to give and you know, you get access to a top notch software. Especially if you're using it in the short term, Adobe's solution is undoubtedly cheaper. However, Apple prefers to make it a one-stop shop where basically you pay a fixed fee of $2.99 USD for Final Cut Pro 10 and that's it. You get ongoing updates for a lifetime. There's no additional subscriptions. Now Apple's fee is definitely more hefty upfront. However, in the long term, you'll find that it's actually cheaper than having a continuous subscription model where, which you have in Adobe's case. Now, I'm not saying one or the other is necessarily better overall. Depending on your circumstances, you may actually prefer Adobe subscription model because you can always stop it and it may cost you well short of the $300 USD that you'd pay for Apple's fee. But again, this is going to come down to your circumstances, but it is a different approach and one worth knowing. So what's my final take here? Look, the chances are you're probably still just as confused as you were when you watched this video. However, my intention wasn't to tell you which software is better for you. You kind of have to decide that. What I do hope you got from this video is that both these softwares are absolutely fantastic tools, but they use different approaches to get the same thing done. I actually personally started off with Adobe Premiere Pro, but just because I knew Premiere Pro didn't mean that I excelled at Final Cut Pro 10 right away. So I actually had to relearn a lot of the elements of video editing when I use Final Cut Pro 10. But I'll tell you this much, both these tools have their pros and cons, and depending on your circumstances, Circumstances, you may find one to be better than the other. One of the key advices I'm gonna give you is that both these thankfully offer a trial. So download the trial, do a couple of projects on them and see which one floats your boat better. You'll get a pretty good idea of which tool you feel more comfortable with. Also, I think it's important to keep in mind that in Adobe's case, you can always do a subscription and cancel it. So if you wanna start off you know, without uh, having too much of a money investment, Adobe might be a slightly better option in that regard because you can always cancel your subscription with a minor cancellation fee. But all in all guys, like I said, you can't go wrong with either of these tools. Be patient, be willing to learn and you'll understand the basics and you start making great videos in no time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please consider subscribing to my channel. We got all kinds of awesome tech content on here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. So tech, logging out.